Hey everyone, I hope you're well. With the holidays just around the corner, I'm guessing that many of you guys are planning to host family and or friends for dinner. Jason and I will be hosting a Friendsgiving dinner this year, which I'm so excited about. And I'm going to be sharing a tablescape video next week in preparation for that, so stay tuned. So I've learned over the years that I love hosting meals no matter the occasion. During the last year of the pandemic, it's been one way to stay in touch with friends since we haven't really been able to eat out as much. And we love hosting mostly Asian food like Korean barbecue, hot pot, spring rolls, or sushi. And Jason and I have collected five kitchen essentials that we believe you must have in your home for hosting. So the first must-have is a large serving platter that is divided. <laughs> Here I'm using one that has two dividers to prepare the ingredients for hot pot. And I just believe that every household should have one of these. I grew up watching my mom collect a few of these in our home. This one was either from TJ Maxx or Marshalls, I can't remember, but I'll try to link similar ones below and they just come so in handy for pretty much anything like snacks you can separate like different flavored chips or even different fruits or finger foods and i also love to use this not just for serving but also for preparing ingredients like for when i'm making kimbap having a platter like this is just simpler than having multiple separate plates and it makes things presentable as well and you'll be seeing this again when we prepare Korean barbecue later in this video. The second must-have is a pot for hot pot or shabu shabu and you want to get one with a divider so that you can have two different flavors going at once. We like to do like spicy versus naan but you could also totally just have them be different kind of soup bases. If you have vegetarian guests over for example, you can have one side be the veggie broth one so on this night, we had quite a large group, so my friend also brought hers and this was nice because I can now show you guys two different kinds of these pots. So hers is a stainless steel one and you can heat up over a portable gas stove. And this kind is great for if you want to do this outdoors like when you are camping or even if you want to just take it out to your backyard or patio. I've also noticed that this method heats up way faster at least compared to my electric one. So the one I have was from HMart and you plug it into an outlet and there's five different heat settings. This one takes a bit longer to heat up but as long as you just turn it up before you're like close to being done with preparing everything then you should be good. And this one is also nice because you don't need to buy replacement fuel. Another big difference with this one is that it is non-stick so you want to be careful and use a wooden ladle. I think either of them are great and doing hot pot at home is so much fun because it's so active like the more people there are you can also try more ingredients. It is also much more affordable to do this at home than to go to a restaurant for it. Alright, the third kitchen must-have for hosting an Asian dinner, especially Korean dinners, is a variety of small plates and sauce dishes. I received a variety of these small blue plates as a gift and I love using them for Korean barbecue sides. We like to chop garlic for grilling or even to eat raw in our lettuce wraps and I love to add jalapenos in there as well. I've also got these small sauce plates from Daiso that I usually use for the bean paste. I've definitely showed you guys my love for these little Daiso plates um, in my shop with me videos. <laughs> Here I'm making the sesame oil dipping sauce by mixing it with salt and pepper. And as you can see, I love to just have a variety of these kinds of plates in different sizes. And I think having them in different styles and colors can also add a lot of fun to your dining table setting and makes everything just look really delicious. This is a dipping sauce that my mom taught me to make. It's thinly sliced onions, some soy sauce, vinegar, and pepper. And it's like this really delicious tangy sauce for dipping the meat in and when you put the onion into your wrap it also adds a really nice crunch. 
everything I'm showing you here in this Korean barbecue portion of the video is how we did it with our family growing up. So every time we eat it this way, it feels so homey for me. Here we're using some more plates for radish wraps and kimchi that we got at the store. And now that we've got all of our sides and sauces ready, I am sharing the fourth must-have, which is this electric grill by Sojirushi. This is the grill that we use for Korean barbecue and it comes with a tray for collecting the oil that drips and the grill has slits for the oil to fall and you just plug this in and this guy heats up really fast. We've had this for almost two years now and it's still in great condition and I think this is honestly really high quality. They've also got this in a bigger size which has like a flat portion on the grill without slits for grilling veggies. And as you can see here, we are using that serving platter again for some lettuce and other sides. So on this day, my brother had three friends over, so it was the six of us total and we ate so much. <laughs> I also really like how this grill is pretty easy to clean. Someone gave us a tip before suggesting that you can pour water onto the tray on the bottom and that just makes washing it easier because the oil that drips will just float on top of the water and then you can just pour that water out. But I would only do this if you have like a separate dedicated jar or some sort of bin to pour the oil in. Um, the way we do it is we just let it harden and then we scrape it off later. Ah, watching this as I record is making me crave some Korean barbecue again. <laughs> So if you're new to Korean barbecue, here's how you can wrap your meat in a few different ways. You pick a leaf and then you add the meat, add some crunch with the garlic or jalapeno for spice, and then you add the bean paste, you wrap it up and you eat it. And I love wrapping mine with the perilla leaf and also the radish wrap. It's like the perfect balance of tangy, spicy with the meat and the crunch of the onion. I feel like I'm getting off track here. <laughs> we have also used this grill before to make burgers and basically took this grill out to the balcony and placed the patties on top and that worked out really well. So I think this is a great option if you live in like a small apartment or condo where you don't have space on your patio for like a giant grill. You can just have something like this that's portable and bring it out there. Hopefully if you have like an outlet socket out there, you can use an extension cord that can plug it from the inside. Last but not least, saving this for last because this must have is great for after dinner as well when you're eating your dessert or fruits. It is this teapot. Uh, we love to use this for some tea. We got it from Ikea and use it all the time, even at just at home when we don't have guests. And we love drinking barley tea usually, which comes in these big bags and you can brew it like two to three times. We also bring this teapot out when we host board game nights with like some snacks and I also love having a few really pretty teacups and dessert plates at home so that it feels extra special. So that is it for my five Asian dinner hosting must-haves. I will make sure to link everything or things similar that I mentioned in this video in the description box below. Let me know if you guys enjoy hosting dinners. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and follow me on Instagram if you'd like. I love connecting with you guys over there. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one.